In this video, we're going to look at drawing amino acids at different pHs. And the underlying concept here is that functional groups on amino acids become protonated and deprotonated um, based on the pH of the solution. And the, and the factor involved with this is understanding what pKa is. So let's take a question here. Uh, draw methionine at pH 11. So why don't you take a moment uh, to draw it at pH 11, and then I will go through the um, mental process of how I would have drawn this at pH 11. So when you're finished drawing it at pH 11, come back to the video, and I'll go through the analysis of that. So what I would do to start this problem is, is first just draw methionine the way I know it. And for me, I draw it at pH 7 because that's the way I was, I learned all the amino acids. And that's the way most people learn them is by knowing their structure at pH 7. So really what we have here is methionine at pH equal to 7. Now, unfortunately, that's not pH 11, which is what the question is asking, but at least then I get, uh, get started with this uh, problem. And so to uh, understand the next part, what I have to do is identify the functional groups on methionine that could possibly change due to changes in pH. And to do that, I need to pull in... To do that, I need to pull in a chart um, that indicates the pKa's of different functional groups in amino acids. So, for methionine, uh, we have a couple of groups we have to we have to consider. One is um, all amino acids have this terminal alpha carboxy group, and it has a pKa of 3.1. And so, I can go back to my structure here and I can identify and find that group, and that's right here. So I know that could possibly change, and its pKa is 3.1, so I'll just write in the 3.1 on that structure. The other group that could change is this terminal amino group, and it has a pKa of 8.0. And so I'll go back to my structure, and I'll identify that group right there, and so that one could possibly change to 8.0. And I go back to the chart again, and I see that those aren't methionine, that's not methionine, either is that, 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 or that, and so those are the only two groups that could possibly change uh, based on uh, pH. Everything else would not change no matter what pH you drew them at. And so that's what this chart helps you with. It helps you identify the groups and tells you the pKa's of those groups. And so what that means to me is I can draw this structure. I can draw this structure now at pH 11, or at least start the process. And so let me first write down what I know. Uh, everything not circled will not change based on pH. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw those pieces in. And I know at pH 11, because they do not change based on pH, will be that. And the only two groups that might change are the carboxyl group and the amine group. Now let's talk about how those might change. So let's think about the two, the two groups. And the chart, and what you need to know here is... Um, is that a carboxyl, a carboxyl group uh, will vary between the protonated and deprotonated states. And so on the left is the protonated state because it has the hydrogen and on the right is the deprotonated state. And so this is protonated, 
and this is deprotonated. And if you look back, you see that you've drawn, at pH 7, we've drawn the methionine in the deprotonated state uh, for the carboxylic group because we drew it as COO minus. Amines can also be protonated or deprotonated, and here are the two forms. NH3 plus, and that can become deprotonated and go to NH2 plus H plus. So the deprotonated form of the amine is NH2, and the protonated form is NH3 plus. Notice the protonated form is the one with the most hydrogens it can possibly get on it, and the deprotonated one is the one with the least number. And notice, uh, so protonated, deprotonated, even though you think about hydrogens, for amines, NH2 is deprotonated, even though it does have hydrogens on it. It just could have another one and become NH3. And so those are kind of the two different forms. And so this is helpful uh, to know those two forms. And so the question is, which form do you write it in? Well, this has to do with the pKa, and here's what pKa uh, essentially means. So pKa is the point at which 50% of it is the pH at which 50% of the uh, functional group is in the protonated form and 50% is in the deprotonated form. So we have already talked about uh, the amine, the pKa, based on our chart, was 8.0 which means if the pH was 8.0, it would mean that half of the amino acids would be in the protonated form of the amine, and half of them would be in the deprotonated form. So that gives us a starting off point, because then after that, there's just one more piece of information we need, and that is, and this is a sentence I like to remember, and I'm going to use a new slide for this, If the pH is below the pKa, protonate. So if the pH is below the pKa, you draw it in the protonated form. And if the opposite is also true, if the pH is above the pKa, it is in the deprotonated form. I just memorized one of the two sentences, and then if the sentence is false, I know it's in the opposite form. Let me put this into action. So for our problem, the pH is 11. And so 11 is the pH, so we have pH. Now you always got to make sure you draw, if you do the pH first in this sentence, not the pKa, and that's where I see... Um, uh, a lot of errors is that they flip-flop pKa and pH. pKa is a constant. It doesn't change. It's a constant for that amine. It's always going to be 8.0. Um, the pKa of the carboxylic acid group is always going to be the 3.1 on that carboxylic acid that we uh, circled. So that's going to say the same. What varies is what pH we're going to draw the structure at. And think about taking the amino acid uh, and putting it in a pH 7 solution versus putting it in a pH 11 solution. How would the structure look different? So the pH in our example is 11. And so the pKa for the amine group, and we'll do the amine group first, is 8.0. So the pH is greater than the pKa. So notice our sentence above. It says, if the pH is below the pKa, which we are not. We are above the pKa. So therefore, we're not protonated. In this case, we'll be deprotonated. Okay, so this was for the amine. All right, here. Let me rewrite that. This was for the amine. And then the carboxyl group, the pH, well, we're still at 11, so we're drawing this at pH 11 was our, our initial goal. The, 
our pKa is 3.1, and so 11 is greater than 3.1, so our statement above is incorrect. If the pH is below, well, our pH is above, and so therefore we're not in the protonated form, we're in the deprotonated form. And so I need to draw both the amine and the carboxylic acid in the deprotonated forms. And so based on this slide, I know the deprotonated forms are COO- and NH2. And so let's go back to our structure, and I can draw deprotonated forms, COO- and NH2. And so there we've drawn methionine at pH 11. Okay, let's try another one, but you're going to see here that the process that we went through is going to be identical to the first time. Um, so let's try drawing lysine at pH 2. Go ahead and pause the video, and when you think you've got it drawn at pH 2, come back, and we will uh, go through the process of drawing lysine at pH 2. Okay, so the way I always start is like I did the last time. I first don't worry about the pH, but just draw it at what I know and what I've known to draw these amino acids at. And so neutral pH is what we typically draw them at, or known to draw them at, or what we'll see them at. And so I'm going to go ahead and draw it as I know. Okay, so there's my structure at pH 7. So now what I have to do is, like I did the last time, I have to figure out which parts of this amino acid might change based on pH. So to do that, uh, we need to go to that chart again. So here's our chart. And so we definitely have a terminal carboxyl group. Um, and so that's uh, 3.1. We definitely have the terminal amino group and that's 8.0. And so we can, like we did last time, I like to identify those so I know that these are the groups that might change. That one's 3.1. This one is 8.0. Okay, and then are there any else? Well, um, aspartic acid and glutamic acid are not what I'm drawing, so I don't have to worry about those. It's not a histidine, so I'm not worried about that cysteine, tyrosine, ooh, lysine, so we have to deal with that, and then arginine, I don't have to deal with. So I have to deal with the lysine, <clears throat> and the group on lysine that's in the R group um, has an amine on that R group, and that amine is a little bit different. So notice from this, not all amines are 8.0, but just the one on the, that's attached to the C-alpha carbon on the amino acids, the one that's on every amino acid. But the R groups tend to have different numbers, and if you're dealing with arginine, it has an R group <clears throat> that you have to uh, consider when you're thinking about pH. Same with tyrosine, cysteine, histidine, and the two acids, aspartate and glutamate. But for us, we have to worry about the R group in lysine, and that's 10.8. And it'll be that amine group that'll be the one that'll ionize, just as we know from previous work that the amine group does ionize. And so that's way up here. So that's that guy we have to deal with. So we have those three to deal with. Nothing else on this structure will change based on pH. And so if we start to think about how to draw this at pH equal to 2, I can start to draw part of it. Because I know no matter what pH I draw it at, it doesn't matter if it's 2 or 10, um, this part's never going to change. And so these pieces will not change. but the end part on the R group will. So we have three groups we have to deal with. And so now, oh, I didn't put the pKa on this terminal or this uh, R group amine. That was 10.8. Okay, so there's our three groups. We have one at 3.1, one 
one at 8.0 and one at 10.8. So at this point, we've identified the groups that might change based on pH. And so let's go take a look at our statement below. Oops. Remember our statement, this is the part that's always never going to change. If the pH is below the pKa, it's protonated. Um, the corollary is also true. If the pH is above the pA, pKa, it's deprotonated. I always just remember one statement. So uh, this is a statement I like to remember. And let's go ahead and we need to write down our pHs and our pKa's. And let's see what we got. So for the amine group, and this is the amine the, the, on the C-alpha carbon, the one that's in every amino acid, the pH that we're shooting for, we're trying to draw it at pH 2. The pKa of that amine group is 8.0. And so the amine, the pH is less than the pKa, or below. If the pH is below the pKa, protonated. So we need to draw the amine in the protonated form, which is NH3+. Plus. And so we can go here and we can draw that amine in the protonated form. There we go. So at pH 2, the amine will be protonated. Let's do the carboxylic acid, or the carboxyl group. Again, we're trying to draw it at pH equal to 2. The pKa of the carboxylic from the chart is 3.1. 2 is less than 3.1. And so we'll need to draw it in the statement above is correct. If the pH is below the pKa, which it is, we need to draw it in the protonated form. And so the protonated form would be that. And so we can draw this now in the protonated form. And there's that group at pH 2. Now we have one more group to do, and this is the R group. Again, we're trying to draw this at pH equal to 2. The R group pKa is 10.8. The pH we're drawing at is less than or below the pKa. And so the statement above is true. If the pH is below the pKa, protonated. And protonated amines all look the same. Or those two look the same. And so we have an NH3+. Plus. And so I just draw this guy as an N. H3 plus, and there we are protonated. And so there is our amino acid drawn at pH 2. We can do a net charge of both of these uh, just to finish it out, just to look at the change. So if you look at these two structures, notice lysine at pH 7, so maybe if you drank, if you made a solution or a amino acid supplement and you drank it um, and you made it at pH 7 in your mouth, this is what the structure of the amine or of the lysine would look like on the left. Once it got down into your stomach, which is acidic, it will look like the structure on the right because in an acidic environment it's going to look a little bit different and that changes its properties just a little bit. And so notice the net charge on the pH 7 structure so if we look at net charge, we look at net charge on the left uh, at pH 7, I have a plus 1, I have another plus 1, so that's plus 2, and then a minus 1, so that's plus 1, plus 2, minus 1, the net charge is plus 1. On the right at pH 2, notice I have a plus 1, another plus 1, that's plus 2, and that's it. So the net charge of the amino acid down in the stomach would be plus 2. And so again, that's going to change the properties of this amino acid, and it changes those properties enough to where it's important to consider. So there we are, we've drawn two amino acids at different pHs. Um, I hope this was helpful.